um, having more relation to the dynamo experiments and potential dynamics that we are constructing right now. Just the, the MRI experiment in basement, which is right now in the design phase, so it hasn't started constructed. There are some parts that will finish, but I think it will take some time to, to run. So um, I just wanted to refer to getting to the impact of electric magnetic boundary conditions. And I will relate to the kinematic dynamic plane. So we have a T squared velocity field, um, which can be some high energy velocity field or some analytical velocity field. Ignore any back reaction, no time dependent fluctuations for the velocity field. Um, and in that case, this problem is a linear problem and can be solved and often in, well, in, in spherical domains, it's not very difficult to apply uh, insulating boundary conditions. And, um, but for other uh, geometries like cylinder or rectangular, it's more difficult. And often people use pseudo micro boundary conditions, which uh, assume that the field is vertical on the boundary. And I just will show how this um, impacts solutions. If you consider an insulating boundary, um, you have no, no current outside of your domain. And you can write the magnetic field as a gradient of scal scalar potential. It fulfills a Laplace equation and you can use V second theory um, to, to write, uh, to get a solution for that. I will go away with V to You can find the solution for, for that by partial integration. The least function appears. And if you discretize these integral equations, you end up with two matrix equations, which look rather complicated um, in here. But um, you, can, you can solve this. And finally, you can express, uh, express your, um, your horizontal magnetic field on the boundary in terms of the normal magnetic field, which is known on the boundary. Just by, by, um, by locating the normal magnetic field with some matrix. And this matrix is only depends on the geometry of your, uh, of your system. So you can compute it in advance and only once. And this gives you the solution um, for insulating boundary conditions for the magnetic field. Uh, the drawback is that this matrix is fully occupied and this restricts your resolution. So, for example, with some really low resolution, 100 grid cells in R, 64 and phi, and 200 in Z, you already, the size of the matrix with double accuracy is 83 gigabytes. And so it makes no sense to, to use it for very high resolved um, simulations. So this gives you an example to compare to the vacuum boundary conditions with this insulator boundary conditions by just considering the free PK of a magnetic field in the cylinder. For pseudo vacuum, we assume end up with an axial field, whereas for real, more realistic or experimentally more realistic insulator boundary conditions, you have a real dipolar pattern because then the horizontal magnetic field on the boundary is not enforced to be zero. Uh, if you look at the decay rates, you see some considerable difference depending on the direction from which you count. It's about 25% that uh, insulating boundary conditions then the field decays a little bit faster. Uh, is faster. <laughs> To the maximum, you just you have the field, the normal field on the boundary, you can compute. That is very possible, but the horizontal field is just put again. Yeah, so, so that means you, you see here, you expect this to be a pure axial field without any dependence. So, so 
uh, and on the on the other boundary here is a field vanishes. So it's enclosed uh, or it's confined in your sim. You sometimes call those Cambridge boundary issues. <laughs> <laughs> It's very popular <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're so fast. Yes, they are much much simpler. And well, if you if you look at the field structure, it's not so much different. And if you include this was a 3 decay, and um, yes, this is a example for a model for the PTS dynamo where often this MND flow was used in analytical um, description of the mean flow in that experiment. Which looks like this: you have an absolute flow in the cylinder, all is all is axisymmetric. You have two colloidal spheres. Somehow it resembles the Dudley James S two T two flow in the sphere, which was, I think, was the best dynamo in the Dudley James paper. So it's the lowest bit in the or something. Um, and if you compare to the vacuum boundary conditions with insulating boundary conditions, again, we get some, some deviations of the growth rates. These are the growth rates of the kinematic dynamo problem. problem. This is a field structure and it doesn't, it doesn't change much for both boundary conditions, but the growth rates are somehow different. You see here, this is the red curve is for the insulating boundary conditions, the black curve is for the, to the vacuum and the critical magnetic vendors on the Difference, difference again by roughly 30 percent. So for insulating, it's larger. So it's diff more difficult to excite a dynamo if you have insulating boundary conditions than if you have to do vacuum, which in fact are difficult or not, not exist in the level of the That's just some kind of introduction to sh show that there is an issue with electrical boundary conditions. And now I would like to switch to the second dynamo experiment where I did similar things. So, first I use a um, hydrodynamic model um, of a precession driven flow in a cylinder. Um, the the Nagy Stokes equation in that case looks like this. I'm, Solving this in the turntable reference, frame of reference, that means I'm standing on this turntable and looking at the and looking at the on the spinning cylinder. So the boundary conditions are your rotation, and uh, I can have this equation equation with a um, coherent force here. The typical solution looks like looks like this. We have here is the colors show the axial velocity here. And this essentially represents a um, recirculation. So, if you consider different forcings, typical velocity fields for various precession ratios, which are parameterized by the Rockerly number here, they look like this. This is for fixed rotation, but for increasing precession and forcing. So, we see the structure becomes more and more complex um, and Maybe slightly turbulent, on, but in any case, we have some some kind of wave-like motion. And what is most important, in my opinion, for the kinematic model, which I wanted to solve, essentially we have a strong time-independent component, or the dominant component is always time-independent. So what I, if you take the time average, the flow field looks much more smoother, like shown here by these isosurfaces for increasing again for increasing the second ratio. So this is basically the time average from the dynamical picture that I showed on the previous. Um, yeah, this is another another figure representing the flow field here. We see the recirculation cell of the following flow of the recirculation pattern and uh, the color coding shows a uh, SUV rotation profile. And it's mostly independent from the axis. And here we see the radial dependence of the SUV rotation. So for, for weak precession ratios, the light.
We seem to have lost the sound on Zoom. When I talk in this direction? Yes, so much better. Okay, I will I will try to speak in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, I included some layer, outer layer to the um, fluid active region that should reflect uh, the um, uh, contain uh, the container uh, in the experiment because um, what what I have to do, uh, I cannot I presented at the beginning I cannot afford doing the insulating boundary conditions with this boundary element method because due to the sharp shear layers here I have to I have to um, choose to choose a much larger res resolution than possible to treat with this boundary. So we include a outer layer here, which has no no fluid, but which has a different electrical conductivity. <laughs> the experiment will finally you, uh, we will have a stainless steel container, and the relation of the conductivity. So the conductivity of stainless steel uh, compared to liquid sodium, which will be the fluid in the experiment, is about one tenth. Or in, in terms of the magnetic diffusivity, the diffusivity of the container is 10 times larger. So when using the velocity field, the time of which velocity field, I calculated um, various growth rates independent of the independence of the magnetic Reynolds number. And for I found that nano action at quite large magnetic Reynolds number and the absolute minimum that I found was for the flow field obtained at a precession ratio of 0 0.1. And uh, this optimum value is 430. And this will be um, achievable in the experiment, but it's still quite, quite a large value. By the way, I, this magnetic Reynolds number is defined with the outer rotation of the container. So it's not defined as an internal field. So here again, the critical magnetic Reynolds number for the various velocity fields. So this is a typical pattern that I found. So, so this is a rather small range um, of precession ratios. I find critical magnetic Reynolds number below the special um, which is a constraint from the experimental setup, which is given by the stretch. Here. So again, this is the growth rate for the optimum value. You can see the crossing here around 430. Dependent, and this is obtained with a pseudo vacuum. I just used here a different variation. So if I add the layer, but with the same conductivity as a fluid, the situation becomes much more worse. So the critical magnetic weather number raises up to nearly 4,000. So dynamo action with some, with some uh, outer layers is really much better, uh, much more worse than, than um, this optimizing super vacuum boundary condition. But when I increase the diffusivity or decrease the diffusivity of the outer layer, I see that uh, there is a different magnetic idle mode coming up here which with a parabolic light shape. And for, um, when I further decrease the uh, conductivity, this, this, um, this idle mode becomes growing. And I see uh, I get a critical magnetic Reynolds number much smaller. And finally, if I Further decrease it, and finally, if I'm close to the value which will be the characteristic value for stainless steel, um, I'm very close to the initial result with a pseudo vacuum. So, to make this long story very short, using realistic electrical boundary conditions, my kinematic simulations give me a result similar to the pseudo vacuum. <laughs> Sorry, for this very long. The I know this really different. Yes, and we'll show it. No, I have no figure yet. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry for that.
again shows a critical magnetic Reynolds number, and there is this threshold at which the new eigenmode becomes dominant, and then this appears in terms of a jump or a drop, strong drop of the critical magnetic Reynolds. So, in any case, this shows that the electrical boundary conditions are at least very crucial for all the solution. I think since the time is quite long, I can stop. Otherwise, I have also prepared some, some other things, but I think it's fine. Okay, you, you added the, but then what kind of conditions on the exterior of the These are two two. I mean, I cheat myself. Well, maybe you're just transferring what you had before. Oh, well, slightly out. I think yeah. when the, this might be the case when the conductivity doesn't change in this outer layer, but when I Decrease the conductivity yeah. then by a factor of eight, then the magnetic field really drops very fast. Then I suppose the outer boundary conditions depend so much. Well, it depends on the frequency of the eye, I mean, the, the temporal frequency of the eye. Yes, we right? yes. 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 need the skin depth compared to. Yeah. Okay. And, and indeed, there is a frequency. I know that the eye is, is rotating. And relative to the rotation of the cylinder, so there is a frequency. In your experience, you know, it's the opposite of how it sounds then. But it's found the condition for about three years. Of course, obviously, that seems to be the case. Yes. That's it. It's a question, then, to do it all. You know, why? <laughs> <laughs> Be honest, no. no. I mean, my, my problem is even much simpler than because I don't have any fluid flow or the fluid flow is stationary, so I cannot argue in terms of right. any, any yeah. boundary layers or any, any forcing, which is. Yeah. I suppose it could be that somehow the extra copper or extra conductor was it, and just give the extra places to disinfect. No, it's more the same. Uh, yes, I should mention as I said, the end, the end of the Yes, yes, it's, it's, it should be the same. Maybe there are, I think there are differences. I treat the singular, there are, in this matrix, there are singularities on the on yeah. diagonal component, because of this Greens uh, parameter. Yeah. And I think I treat it that differently from, from the distribution from the like, like That's, this. yeah, no. Yes, fine. Yes. Yes, it's part of but I treat these similarities slightly different, but it doesn't matter so much unless you would exactly have a point of that. This is usually not the case. This is usually not. And another thing, I, I think I treated the corners differently, but that seems also doesn't matter so much. It's it's uh, important to you have to solve integrations numerically before uh, for these metrics, and it's important to do this quite accurately, because otherwise you get wrong solutions in the corners. That's it. yeah, but basically it's it's the same. What's the angular of the precision you're using, and how do you result pan on? Um, we use so I'm using uh, 90 degrees, so the maximum angle. Um, there seems to be a dependence. Uh, we have simulations and also experiments now with other angles, but all angles are large. Don't do small angle precession. So we have 60 degrees and 5 degrees. Qualitatively, the results look 
more or less similar. There is a difference between zone rate and retrograde. I think retrograde is much smoother. So there's uh, in the prograde case, we have always a strong upward transition from lamina to turbulent really. Um, this is much smoother or doesn't exist at all in the retrograde case. Um, but mostly the results are qualitatively different. We have some minor, minor differences. Very complicated to get them described in a three or four seconds. You were saying with Andy that it's kind of the omega effect, the differential rotation between your mode and the boundaries. So you might have some tuning if you make yes. this angle. We indeed. We did, uh, and you could maybe yeah. even decrease. Indeed, we uh, did uh, kinematic dynamic simulations are also for the other angles, and it seems that the best case is indeed the 90 degrees. Um, for the ritual gate case, when we don't have this strong transition, um, we don't have these sharp shear layers close to the boundary. As here you see. These shear layers, they are not so strong in the retrograde case. So, and in that case, we don't find time. So, this uh, is obviously important. I'm not listening to the bear. I'm sorry. Turn all the songs. You sound like you're just probably. Hmm? Oh. Oh, 